Fantastic, sir. How are you today? Good, man. I'm doing very good. Ladies and gentlemen, Cameron of the Dreamer Night is like... Hell yeah! What's up, everyone? Yes, <laughs> How are you guys doing? <laughs> cool, man. I'm happy to be on. I've uh, heard a lot of cool things about you, and I've been able to meet Lizzie. Um, she's awesome, and I know you guys do a bunch of cool shit here, so I'm excited she, to talk she, shop. She, she is awesome. Talk. Thank you for, for shouting that out. Uh, whereabouts in the world are you right now? And before we start, is there anything you'd like to plug or promote? Um, I live in Southern California. Um, I'm in the Inland Empire. Uh, shout out Inland Empire Hardcore. Um, I play in a hardcore band, so um, that's, you know, got to show love to my scene. Um, of course. And, uh, yeah, I'm an artist manager. Um, that's what I do daily. I manage a bunch of cool bands, and I'm the owner of the Dreamer Agency. Um, other than that, there's not much I want to plug, <laughs> you know. That's it's just it. <laughs> it's just the dreameragency.com if someone wants to look it up, correct? Yeah, yeah. You can check us out at the dreameragency.com. You can check out our roster. You can check out all the bands we represent, all past tours we've worked on. Um, check out all the work that we've done over time. Um, have a little bit of like uh, submission forms on there if you guys want to submit your music and stuff like that. I check out all the submissions that come through. Um, I love listening to new music and seeing what new bands are out there and you know, I try to show love for everybody. Um, but yeah, that's what we're about, man. We're the dreamer agency. What's your, what's your personal favorite genre? So if someone's watching uh, and they happen to make that genre, they're like, Oh, okay. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my personal favorite genres are metalcore, hardcore, and deathcore. You know, I, that's the scenes I grew up in, in Southern California, going out to shows and just going out to local shows. And, uh, that's how I grew up. You know, that's how I got involved in the music industry. I didn't I didn't go to school or anything for this. I just like, you know, started and just threw myself in the fire at anywhere I could, you know. Um, and uh, I started going to local shows here in town and got involved in my local venue and, you know, just started learning as much as I possibly could. That was actually gonna be my next question is like, when and how did you come up with, why, why the name The Dreamer Agency? But you said just basically just hanging out at shows and just seeing all this talent, I imagine, and you were just like, you know what? I got it. Yeah. Like I said, yeah, I mean, I've thrown myself in the fire um, and try to get as much perspective as possible. And um, and I've been a touring musician myself, you know, uh, and I still play in bands and stuff. And I still have a, you know, I still try to, like, gain as much perspective as possible there. But... You know, I've booked tours. I've done all, I've done like, I've tried to hold like every position in the music industry. Um, but, you know, the main thing that's been going on is um, like, you know, the management stuff. You know, um, what was the, what was the question? My bad. Just, uh, you kind of like went into it, but what was going to be my next question is how did you like come up and start the Dreamer Agency? Or did I, yeah. If you want to um, elaborate. So yeah, so um, I got I got into you know booking tours by going on tours with my own band. I would book my my own band tours, and um, basically how I came up with the Dreamer Agency was I was hustling, trying to get people to book for my my band, and uh, basically just trying to like get as many people to like help me, but nobody would reach out and, like or reach back out to me and like help me. So I was like, dude, I got to do this. Thing myself and i think that's relatable to a lot of different bands that are out there right now trying to hustle and get out there and make a name for themselves um so i knew that there had to be like an artist development program for bands to come to to help develop and get to that next step you know whether it was like you know you're trying to get a booking agent or you're trying to like you know get you know more press or like more advertising you know something to get more people discovering your band um that's kind of like how i came up with the name is like okay well we're all just a bunch of dreamers trying to make this thing happen and a bunch of musicians trying to get to the next level, you know? Um, so that's basically how I came up with it. And, you know, I, I started at my local venue, like I said, like doing sound, just trying to get perspective. Right. 
um, and just trying to learn the ropes. Uh, so I was a sound engineer for a little bit. And then um, I got picked up by a few bands and went on tour with them. So I got like the touring experience. As their sound engineer? And then you could as also double and play if someone yeah. got sick. Yeah, as a sound engineer. <laughs> yeah. Well, Impending Doom walked up to me like at a show. I was like, yo, Brooke came up to me. He's like, yo, you want to go on tour with us? I was just like, okay. <laughs> sure, sure <laughs> why know? not? And, uh, <laughs> and that's how I got my first tour experience. And then from there, I kind of like, I wanted to get more perspective. So I became a promoter and started promoting shows here in town. And I got hired from a, a music venue and became a venue manager. Um, so I learned all the venue operation kind of side of things, doing that stuff. And then um, that's when I started touring with my band. And then I started booking tours for other bands. Um, and then my I, goal I do want to I, I do want to ask a question about that. Can yeah, you can you explain sure. how how the process of booking a tour starts and what the the main we've had a couple different answers on this one, but I just want to like know your yeah. process. Yeah, man, it could start a lot of different ways. So like say you have a band in Southern California, right? Where I'm from, they want to, they want to get out. Um, for me, like personally working with them, I have to evaluate the band first. Do they have any tour history? Do they, <clears throat> are they brand new? Like, do they have a local draw? Right. And from there I can kind of take them and I can develop them and I can make things happen, you know, but first things first is like, you have to have a local draw. Right. Um, a lot of these bands, they want to be like really ambitious with how they do things. And like, you, you know, a band out here in Southern California, I could talk to them and it'd be like, we want to go to the East coast. We want to, you know, we want to go to the Midwest. We want to tour Texas. It's like, all right, well, let's figure this out. Hold up, you know, baby steps first, Hold you know, up. let's, let's go step by step. Um, do you have a draw on your local scene? That's first step, you know? And then, um, from there, if you do have a draw on your local scene, it's like, okay, cool. Let's utilize that local scene and help bring out other bands that are, that have good draws in their local scene and try to help them develop as well. You know, um, start booking them weekend runs, pair up with other bands and show trade with other bands, develop a region, develop, develop a territory, right. Of like an area that people can come to and they can re rely on you as a resource and an asset and, you know, take it, take that and apply that all over the country, right. Take over a, a region, take over the West coast, right. Because if you have the West Coast, then now you can trade that market and you can utilize that to get into the Midwest or utilize that to get into the East Coast or, or you know, the Texas area, South, Southern Florida, you know. Mm. That totally um, makes sense. Yeah. But a lot of bands, they want to start out too, too fast, too soon, you know. And that's the biggest problem I see with, with touring is like you got to really, really focus, hyper focus on a specific region first and just develop over time. It just takes time. Beyond looking at just numbers, if a band submits to the website, what do you? What else are you looking for? Um, so like when I first got started in, in like doing the tour booking stuff, I was just looking for bands that were like ready to go, like they were prepared, they had a band and trailer and like all that stuff. But you know, I've been doing this for since 2015, um, and I've I've realized that it takes a lot more than that now, you know, and not saying numbers or anything like that, you know, numbers help sell. Like if we're reaching out to promoters and like trying to like get different people involved, um, booking the shows and stuff, it, the numbers do help. But I think what ultimately helps now is um, for me, what turns my head is for one music prepared, right? Do you have music prepared going into the tour that you can release that we can kind of like take it and release singles up until the tour and maybe drop the album around the tour or does the band have like an overall something that separates it from what it, from what everybody else is doing right like and that can be visually or that can be audibly um on the visual side of things what's unique about your band like do you do you have like uh, an image like a gimmick you know do you have something that's that makes you um that gives you an identity right like if you are a band that wears leather and studs do that a hundred percent you know go all in you know are you a band that you know an anime based band you know are you what are you what what makes your band gives your band identity um and for me 
I feel like basically like b- people don't want to see the whole like we're just a group of guys and we're a group of musicians that play music, you know, the normal everyday music guys for me and like the data that I'm collecting. So what I'm really looking for is something that separates themselves from that. Like normal, we're just dudes that play band uh, and bands and mm-hmm. like, that's our visual side of things. And audibly it's like, okay, what do you have to offer? That's different from, you know, the, like the standard genres, you know, like the pop punk, deathcore, hardcore, metalcore type stuff. Like, Sure. Is it is your music like like just stands out so far that it's just like completely different to where we feel like it, it fit into those those like demographics and those niches, but you know, um we can maybe market to all those different demographics, right? Hell yeah. So you gotta have a little bit of a niche, but Yeah. At the same time you could still be a small band, just it's gotta be something that's, you know, catches your ear, catches your eye and it's different. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like I said, like I started out as a metalhead, like metalcore kid, hardcore kid going to shows. And like, that's really what the dreamer agency is based on. Like that's majority of the bands we work with because, you know, that's just the style I like, but, um, you know, we're open to everything. We really are like, um, it just depends on like who's working with the company and like what they what kind of music they like and all that stuff. And we're always looking for new artist managers and new booking agents to take on and like either learn the trade or come in and like take on a roster of their own. Will I see you at the whiskey on Thursday? Um, I might be there just for a brief moment. It's my brother's birthday that day. So that's the only reason I wouldn't be there, but Lucrezia is going to kill it. And I am so stoked for them to have that show. You just settled a debate. I didn't ask it the way it was asked in chat, but I've been saying Lucretia, which I'm sure everybody says, but it's Lucretia. Yeah. Lucretia. I go off what Frankie says. So yeah, I mean, if they say it, then you know, then that is that way. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, Frank, Frankie's the vocalist of uh, Lucretia, and they're a fucking killer band. If you guys have not heard them, go check them out. They are a uh, anime based like metalcore band. They call they call it Kawaii Core. It's a Japanese um, subculture kind of influenced band. And uh, they're playing at the Whiskey on uh, Thursday with a band called Hanabi. And Dropout Kings and Fox Lake. I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be there supporting. Uh, were you prepped on the trivia portion of the show? I was prepped. Uh, I might have to go get my hot sauce. Before you go <laughs> get it. Before you go get it. Uh, is there a movie or TV show you've seen so many times that if I look up trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped? Oh, man. Um, TV show, you said? Or a movie. Your call. Or a movie. Um, I'm a really big wrestling, pro wrestling fan. I don't know if we could do pro wrestling, but like, I feel like if we did pro wrestling, I'd do pretty good. <laughs> Uh, what about, what is it, Rocky 2 that the Hulk's in? Or The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke? Uh, okay, so you want to do a movie? I, can, um, I guess I, I, I can look up wrestling trivia. Let me see. Just go, go grab okay. the hot sauce real quick and give me a second to, to look. Push out. Oh, there go is there. WWE trivia. Okay. Hit me with a motherfucking curveball right now. What am I gonna do? Say no? Of course not. He's the guest. You gotta, you gotta support the guest. Usually the. Oh, good luck. The fridge was like right there because that was a very long trip. I have some Taco Bell hot sauce. I mean that counts. Taco Bell hot sauce is cool. <laughs> Man, there's there is nine hundred something WWE questions that just popped up on this website, and so I'm trying to see if I can. F- find something. Who's your favorite wrestler? Uh, favorite wrestler of all time is probably Stone Cold Steve Austin. Give me a hell yeah! yeah. Current current wrestlers. Um, I like CM Punk before they fired his ass. Um, but I do like Cody yeah, that Rhodes. just happened too, right? Yeah, they just fired him. Uh, he got in a backstage brawl with somebody. I don't know if it's a work or a shoot, but they fired him. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, but he was doing some cool stuff before, like, um, all that, ins- all those incidents happened. But 
you know. Do you, the, do the you go to a lot of the wrestling events when they come into town? Um, I I wish I could go to more, um, but it's so much better on TV. I'm not gonna lie because like <laughs> I've been I've been to a wrestling event. It was fun, but yeah, I I know like, what you're saying. The like because like on TV they have like the commentators, you know, and the commentators are like they they kind of hype up like the the wrestling. But live, you don't have the commentators. It's just the wrestling. It's just kind of like okay. And like if you if you can't get a good seat, like you're in the way back and you're just like seeing these like ants perform. It's, yeah, you got binoculars. Yeah, it, it, it's like football. I don't know if you've ever been to a football game, but it's much better on TV than it is. At I, the I've game. been to many a football game, and I'm, I'm a Vikings fan, and it is very hard, my friend. Yeah, well, I'm a Green Bay Packers fan, so we'll get along. Oh, this okay. <laughs> Yo, you know what, Cameron? Have yourself a great day. We'll see you next time. No, I'm okay, but uh. No. Let's see. Let's see how much. How much? I don't think you can hear any of the sounds I'm playing. By the way, let me see if no, I can turn. No, I can't hear anything. Yeah. So now you should be able to hear the sounds. Hold on one second. Let's see. Can you hear this? Can you hear anything? No, I can't hear that. Oh, weird. It says computer sound is on. Oh, I, I guess I would have to do. Oh, anyway, that doesn't matter. But this is your trivia. This is your trivia right here. Who did The Undertaker fight in his first ever coffin match? Whether you get it right or wrong, I will do hot sauce as well. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get my hot sauce ready. Um, I think it was Shawn Michaels. That is not correct. <laughs> Kamala is the answer. Kamala? Damn, that was before I was born, I think. Yeah, that man. was an old one. That was an old one. <laughs> Cheers. Like, oh, this is ghost pepper wing sauce. It's not Jeez, as hot as you think, right. though. Uh, they put, like, one ghost pepper in the whole bottle. It's not that bad. Well, I'll drink my Taco Bell. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Thanks for being a good sport about it. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> hope you do that with me here all your guests and not just me i do it with like, all of them i prom if they're willing to do it some of them are, say they don't have hot sauce and if they're down to, um, to take a shot or drink a beer or something uh, then we go that right <laughs> it's spicy, spicy talk about hot sauce is spicy you know you would not you would not like some of the sauces i got but um what do you do in your in your spare time when you're when you're not when it's not working on band day and maybe uh maybe the family's already on a vacation so you're just chilling what do you what do you do on an off day uh, I play video games, uh, watch, you know, sports, but you know, on off days, I might be practicing drums, you know, or playing other instruments. I, I, music is really, truly my passion and like, it takes up a majority of my time. How many instruments do you play? Um, I play piano, I play drums, I play guitar and I fuck around with bass, but I don't, I wouldn't call myself a bass player. No vocals? I try. I'm, I, I'm, I'm learning vocals. Um, currently learning screaming as well. Like I, I play in a band called cold view and, um, we're like a hardcore just band, whatever. And I'm learning how to do vocals cause I'm doing drumming and backup vocals now. So trying to learn screaming. So I'm constantly blowing my voice out and like trying to callous my voice up <laughs> and toughen it up. Have you ever seen those Melissa cross videos? Yeah. I love Melissa cross. She's yeah. The best. I, I saw her like back in the day with work with Randy Blythe, the Lamb of God. And I was just like, dude, this, this is the chick. Like, I know this, this is the way to do it, you know, diaphragm work and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I, I try to keep conscious of it when I do it live. I've, I've done it live a few times already and, um, you know, just drumming, it just takes so much air out of you you know it's hard to save up that air in your diaphragm and then like your diaphragm goes flat and it's just like all right i'm just gonna scream as hard as i can right now you know and then like you start seeing stars <laughs> but hey you're like Whew. that's you, the nature of the game man <laughs> do you ever uh envision accepting uh non-metal submissions and and considering other genres or do you just want to oh, yeah. kind of keep the okay no most definitely um like I, I love all kinds of music. I'm not just a metalhead, um, but you know, um, we work with bands kind of like that are going in that direction. Like I don't know if you've heard of Takers Leavers. Um, they're from California. They're a great 
you know, kind of just like hard rock, post hardcore type band, a lot of singing um, and just like very instrumental, you know, um, but we're open to anything as long as it's like, we feel like they found their, their sound and like we can get it out there to the world. Cause our thing is like, how can we create moments of discovery, you know? And if it's good music, it's good music. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of like my perspective on it. This I think is kind of an easy one. We're gonna do one okay. more, one more trivia. All right, hopefully I get this one right. The Ultimate Warrior became uh-huh. WWF champion at WrestleMania six by beating <laughs> who? Um, Hulk Hogan. That is correct. Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing right now. We're spinning okay. this wheel right here. <laughs> and I have to do an apple cider vinegar shot, which I hate apple, apple cider, cider vinegar. vinegar. I love the music. It was like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> it's different every time, actually. <laughs> there we go. Uh, is there anything that scares you, bro? Just random fun questions. Do you have any phobias? I always like to hear people's phobias. Phobias. This what this question is always hard. Um, you know, it's, I'm not like a typical like, oh, I'm scared of spiders or heights kind of guy. You know, I'm like, I'm like a deeper kind of person where it's like, I fear death. You know, <laughs> like that's like, you know, the phobia I have. So I drive really slow. You know, I drive uh, pretty safe. I always buckle up. I try not to drive like with drinks in me or anything like that. <laughs> no, no speeding tickets in in your no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is tell me a band or an artist that you listen to that we would not expect um i listen to the fray I never or Miles Harris, you know whatever <laughs> cool i can dig it in any like yeah. edm or, or hip-hop i listen to some hip-hop um i don't really listen to edm i have like a lot of friends that um like really love that that music so i, I sometimes go out and you know, see people perform. Like, I just don't know anything about it where I'll just be like bobbing my head the whole time. <laughs> um, but yeah, some hip hop, uh, I tend to like more of the, the more like rappers that like logic or futuristic or Hobson, like kind of rappers that kind of like talk more about reality versus like bitches money and like, you know, drugs. <laughs> Cause like, I just can't relate to that shit. But um, yeah, that's kind of, more of what I listen to in hip hop. I don't listen to too much hip hop. What What is the most common mistake you see bands make? Not necessarily ones that are just so eager to tour and just not taking over a region, but uh, just a common mistake you see like a starting up band make that you just wish they wouldn't make this mistake. Um, you know, uh, a lot of bands are just trying to trying to do things and experiment with doing things right so like they don't necessarily know what works and what doesn't work so you, you really gotta try shit so a lot of it's not a mistake but if you have a, the guidance to avoid making those mistakes right um that's where you know artist management comes in like the experience that we've accumulated but when i ev- evaluate bands the, the biggest thing i see is that across the board that is i guess a mistake is how they release music, right? Some of them will, um, you know, throw their record out all at once, which is a big Mm. no-no. How Spotify and like all these new, you know, um, DSP platforms are becoming, it's like, they're more, um, they're, they're making their platforms more to where like, they're more about consistent uploads, right? Right. And like triggering algorithms and trying to get to a point where um, people are constantly coming back to their profiles. So that's what rewards you and gets you more, you know, streams through like algorithmic playlists are like the big thing now. Do you guys offer um, playlisting? So the way we do playlisting is so there's different sources of playlisting. And I encourage like every bands like look into their Spotify for artists and look into your source of streams because you know there's different playlisting categories so there's like algorithmic playlist categories there's editorial playlist categories and 
there's like other listener playlist categories, right? So what we try to do is like, we're all about trying to spark the algorithm, trying to get the algorithm working for you because that's what's going to consistently bring in those monthly listeners, right? So the, what we do is how we structure releases is we do spread them out over a six to eight month span of time. And we, we consistently release singles every six to eight weeks. Um, so there's constantly releasing new music and there's, you're constantly building um, hype through your social media and advertising um, on it on social media to where it's bringing traffic over from your social media accounts to your your Spotify account. We use Spotify as the example for all this stuff. And like, that's the main one because like they do post numbers on Spotify and we work in an industry of numbers. Mm -hmm. It's sad at the end of the day and it's not how I function, but you know, that's how the industry works. And it's an industry of numbers. So if you're not playing the numbers game, then you're not playing the industry game. Um, so what our goal is, is it's the trigger those algorithm playlists to where you're consistently getting those monthly listeners coming in. Um, and you know, you see these bands with like a hundred month, hundred K monthly listeners or like, you know, a million monthly listeners. It's like, wow, how are they, you know, maintaining this every month, you know, and a lot of it's through the algorithm. Um, so when a song comes out, it goes to release radar, right. And everybody's release radar playlists are different. My release radar playlist would be different from your, um, release radar playlist BG because Spotify curates those specific to the listeners, um, listening habits, you know, so bands that you listen to, um, they're going to try to, they're going to try to, um, recommend music that maybe you would potentially listen to. So they'll put, you know, different bands on your release radar. So you click them and you discover them. And if, you know, that process goes well, then maybe you'll end up on like discover weekly, you know, and that, that's another, algorithmic playlist so our playlist strategy is more of trying to get those algorithmic playlists working for you versus going to another source of streams that's called other listener playlist categories other listener playlist categories is a, is a category where you and i can create a playlist right or somebody that has 37 cell phones with 37 spotify accounts can play your song over and over and over again in their garage right um, that's what we try to avoid is, is like working with playlists that aren't, um, genuine and aren't, aren't organic or, or aren't organic. Um, because what Spotify is really looking for now is save the stream ratio, right? Not so much streams. You can bring in a volume of streams, but really what Spotify is looking for is your save the stream ratio. So are people listening to your song and engaging with it versus, how many streams are just coming in. Mm -hmm. You can actually in, oversaturate and inflate the amount of streams that are coming in and ruin your Spotify account because you don't have the, um, the saves. So you're not getting those algorithmic playlists. So we do work with other listener playlist categories, but we are just careful about it. We do our, our research into it. Um, we look into like other bands that we have on our roster through Spotify for artists and see what other listener playlist categories they have as well that they're utilizing. Um, and we, if it's organic, we'll, we'll use that. If it's genuine, we'll use it. Um, but there's a hidden economy behind, um, Spotify. And a lot of these people are capitalizing on it because, you know, you can, start a playlist and you can be like, yo, give me 40 bucks to get, you know, slot number one on it. And basically what's happening is they have those 37 cell phones in their garage and they're streaming it over and over and over again and just running your shit and running the numbers up. But they usually do it through a VPN. So like when you go to your Spotify artists account, you'll see it coming from like one region, you know, like somewhere in like Indonesia or something or like somewhere in like, way over in the other side of the country like germany or something so it's like obvious when um those playlists aren't or are aren't genuine um so that's one thing that i would tell bands to try to avoid if you guys are going and trying to buy on the playlists be careful of that um 
because that could actually fuck up your Spotify account versus like trying to help you. It might help you in a short run where it's like, oh, dude, we just got on this playlist and now we have, you know, fucking 30,000 monthly listeners. But then next month it's like, oh, shit, we're back to fucking um, 10 monthly listeners. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what we're trying to build. Clearly, is, that would be obvious if that happened. Yeah. What we're trying to build with the algorithmic playlist is is a sustainability and consistency. So to get that, we have to throw music out there per month, new releases out there per month to help get bands on those algorithmic playlists, to help Spotify get your music in front of new people that have never heard your music before. So create those moments of discovery. This is the absolute best answer about Spotify and or playlisting I've I've ever ever gotten. Well done, Cameron. My final question for you, and I'm just gonna end on a fun one. Earlier you said on an off day you do play video games. Three best video yeah. games ever made. Um Metal Gear Solid two, um, Sons of Liberty. Um I just played The Last of Us Part Two, and that was definitely one of my favorite games I've ever played. Do you watch the show? Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah, it's so good. It was amazing. Uh, I was scared, I was scared they're gonna ruin it, <laughs> you know, because that's typically what shows do. Yeah, it like exceeded it. expectations. Yeah, they added the stuff they added was was genius. I thought it, it just made the show better and like the script better. Um, but yeah, I really love that game. I buy that game for people I love just because I'm just like, dude, that's such a good game, and like <laughs> you need to experience this, especially musicians. Like, I won't give away the ending, but like, um, musicians could definitely relate to this game um so if you haven't played it go play it um and then another one i'm a football fan so like madden you know just something simple where i can sit down and play for 15 minutes and then go back to work i, I do that a lot that's a typical cheesehead answer yeah. right there. <laughs> <laughs> cameron this is fun man i appreciate you the dreamer agency.com if you guys make music and you want to submit you want them to hear something maybe uh you guys could be working together fantastic Fantastic advice today, sir, and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, man. Good meeting you, too. Yeah, hopefully I'll see you Thursday. Yeah, that'd be sick. Later, BG. Cheers, brother. Have a great day. Cameron, the Dreamer and I just say... Hell yeah. Stone Cold, just for you also. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. <laughs> the beers. Hey, <laughs> Hi, what's up, sir? Welcome to the local band, Smokeout.